Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 1, lesson 4, zero and negative exponents. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the zero exponent rule and the quotient of powers property to simplify expressions with zero and negative integer exponents. Let's learn. Exponents of zero. Use the zero exponent rule to simplify expressions containing exponents of zero. So the zero exponent rule says that any non-zero number to the zero power is equivalent to one. So any number to the zero power is equal to one, unless that number is zero. Zero to the zero power is not one. So if we were to take five to the zero power, that would be equal to one. If we were to take 30 to the zero power, that would be equal to one. If you had three billion to the zero power, it would be equal to one. That's gonna be an important rule going forward. Anything to the zero power is one, unless that something is zero. Here, let's fill in the table to demonstrate that any non-zero number n to the zero power would be equal to one. So if we had n to the fifth, Thinking back to previous lessons, that's really n times n times n times n times n. It's n five times. If we divide by n, so dividing it by n, right, we can cancel one of those out, and we have four n's left. So by dividing, we subtracted one from our exponent. If we do the same for n to the third, dividing by n again, and then dividing by n again to get n to the second, and n to the first. If we were to divide by n one more time, how many n's are left? There are no n's left, but any number divided by itself is equal to one. So going through this, we can show that n to the zero power, n meaning any number, to the zero power is equal to one. So n divided by n would be equal to one, meaning n to the zero is equal to one. Write the expressions that are equivalent to one. First, pause the video and see if you can figure out which ones will go into the bin. Let's go through this. So I want to know the ones that are equivalent to one. Now, anything to the zero power is going to be equal to one. So I see here we have two to the zero power. Here I have one to the zero power. Here I have one half to the zero power. Those ones definitely are equal to one. That's what we just learned in our rule. Let's check the others. Two to the first power is two. That's not equal to one, doesn't go there. One squared or one times one, that is actually equal to one. So that one goes there. And then zero to the first power, zero one time is zero, not one. That one does not. So three of them to the zero power and also one to the second power go in this equal to one bit. Take a minute to pause and think about this question. Do all powers with any rational number base and an exponent of zero equal one? Explain what you're thinking. Pause the video to jot some thoughts down. Since it's actually asking a question, I'm gonna tell you approximately what you should have put. You should have said something along the lines of that, yes, any rational number with an exponent of zero will equal one, except if that number is zero. Zero cannot be the base. Any other number that's rational would work. Example one, exponents of zero. Simplify 12 to the zero. So as we've just seen in our rule, any non-zero number to the zero power is equal to one. We have 12, that's not zero, to the zero power it is one, so 12 to the zero must be equal to one. Check your understanding. Simplify m to the zero, m is not zero. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said one. This is something to the zero power, and we know that that something is not zero, which means this is equal to one. So even if it was a variable, if it's to the zero power, it still is equal to one, as long as we know that that variable is not equal to zero. Let's learn negative exponents. A negative exponent is the result of repeated division. We can use negative exponents to represent very small numbers. So when we're getting into decimals like one tenth, one one hundredth, one one thousandth, those are actually gonna be represented by negative exponents. So if we're going through our table to follow the pattern to see how negative exponents work by using our repeated division. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, which is a thousand. If we divide that by 10, we get 100, which is 10 squared. Divide by 10 again, we get 10 to the first. If I divide by 10 again, I get one, so 10 to the zero. Here's where we're gonna start going into negative exponents. If I divide by 10 again, I get one tenth, and then one one hundredth, and one one thousandth. Each time I was dividing by 10, and because I was dividing by the same base, I had to subtract my exponent. So to go from here to here, I ended up doing zero minus one, which is negative one, and then subtracting one again, negative two, and so on. That's how we get our negative exponents, is by dividing by the same base, more times than what we had originally. So for negative exponents, any non-zero number to the negative nth power is the multiplicative inverse of its nth power. It's a complicated way of saying any number to the negative power is just equal to one over that same thing to the positive power. And this is what we're gonna to wanna to use. We want a positive exponent, not a negative. So if you see a negative exponent, what you're going to be doing, putting it in the denominator and making it positive. Again, as long as x is not equal to zero because we don't wanna divide by zero. We can see this a little bit better with numbers. Seven to the negative three would mean you're dividing by seven three times. So divide by seven, divide by seven, divide by seven gives us one over seven to the third power. So from beginning to end, I took the same value, same exponent, put it in the denominator and made the exponent positive. 
take a second to pause and think about if you pause the video when going through the learn, what can you make sure so you don't repeat any errors that you may have made? If you just followed along with me, what are some places that might be confusing to you with negative exponents? Also, this is a good place to write down any questions that you have. Pause the video and jot down your thoughts. Example two, negative exponents. Express six to the negative third using a positive exponent. This particular example is pretty important because when we're simplifying things with exponents, our final simplification cannot have negatives in it. It has to be only positive exponents. So here, this is not simplified, six to the negative third. I need to rewrite it with a positive exponent. And here's where our negative exponent rule will come in. So six to the negative third, I can take it and move it to the denominator, one over that number. It just has a positive exponent version. So six to the negative three, using a positive exponent would be one over six to the positive three. Check your understanding. Express a to the negative five using a positive exponent. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said one over a to the positive five. So again, I just took it, moved it to the denominator of the fraction and made it positive. Another way to think about it, if you're confused about what you're doing, this is really a fraction over one. What we're actually doing is flipping that fraction and then making it positive. It's the multiplicative inverse, meaning reciprocal, you flipped it and made it positive. Example three, negative exponents. Express the fraction one over c to the fifth using a negative exponent. So here we're just going backwards of what we did. If we see an exponent in the denominator of a fraction, it can also be expressed as a negative exponent. So just going backwards, if I'm taking it out of the fraction, I would make it into a negative exponent. So it's positive in the fraction, take it out, make it negative. So one over c to the fifth using a negative exponent is c to the negative five. Check your understanding. Express the given fraction using a negative exponent. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said nine to the negative seven. So I took my base and my exponent from the denominator, moved it out, same base, negative exponent. Example four, negative exponents. Simplify five to the third power times five to the negative fifth power. So here we're given an expression that has two bases that we're multiplying. So we're gonna to need to use the product of powers property, but we're also given a negative exponent. So we might have to use our negative exponent rule. When we're simplifying, we need to make sure there is no negative exponents. And if there are bases, we can only have each base once. So because I have two fives as a base, this is not simple. And because I have a negative exponent, this is not a simplified expression. So let's combine them together using the laws of exponents that we've learned about so far. So first, product of powers. If I multiply two bases, I add the exponents. So three plus negative five gives me five to the negative two. Three plus negative five is negative two. Now I have a negative exponent. So I'm going to write it as one over that with a positive exponent. So now I have one over five to the positive two. Then simplifying five to the second power is just 25. So we can simplify it further to one over 25. If it was just asking for a simplified version and didn't care if you multiplied it out, this might be acceptable in some cases, but because five to the second power is pretty easy to multiply out, we just have one over 25. So five to the third times five to the negative fifth would be one over 25. Check your understanding, simplify the given expression, pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said three to the positive five, or if you multiply that out, 243. Here, if we do our product of powers, we can do three and then we're multiplying. So nine plus negative four, nine plus negative four is just five. So three to the fifth. This here only has a base of three and there are no negative exponents. So this is simple. We don't have to do anything further. We can multiply it out three times three times three times three times three is 243. Example five, negative exponents. Simplify w to the negative one divided by w to the negative four. Here I can see I have two parts that have a base of w and some negative exponents, so I need to do some work to simplify this. First, I'm gonna get rid of my division using my quotient of powers property. So subtracting negative one minus negative four gives me positive three. Subtracting a negative is adding what negative one plus four is positive three. So I end up with just w to the third power. By doing the quotient of powers property first, I can check to see if I end up with a negative exponent. If I do, then I can use my negative exponent rule rather than doing this first. Another way we could do this if I wanted to use my negative exponent rule first, this is a negative exponent, so I would move it outward and upward. This one's a negative exponent, so I would move it into the bottom of the fraction. What I end up with is w to the fourth divided by w to the first. Then I can now use my quotient of powers property. w to the fourth divided by w to the first would be still four minus one, which is three. So I got the same thing, but it was actually more work to do the negative rule first. Quotient of powers property first gave me that positive exponent right away. So that's showing there's more than one way to use these as long as we're following the laws of exponents correctly. 
So after all that, w to the negative 1 divided by w to the negative 4 was equal to w to the positive 3. Check your understanding. Simplify the given expression. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said 1 over b to the third power. So here I'm going to do my quotient property first. b is my base. Negative 7 minus negative 4. This is really adding 4. Negative 7 plus 4 gives me b to the negative 3. Then that's over 1. To get my positive, I got to put it in the denominator or do the multiplicative inverse. So 1 over same base, now positive exponent. So b to the third. 